This is The Real Thing, Episode 1. This is Hillwood College in L.A., three miles from the Staples Center. I'm Aiden Jackson. I'm 18 years old, and I've just recently been converted into a punching bag by the college football captain. If you're thinking, this isn't the story I was expecting, then my message to you is to join the fucking club. My bully is a whack job. You sound doubtful. Okay, he fucking is. This is actually not something I'm able to speak about without rocking. You want a revelation? Well, I'm paralyzed, okay? Really, Aiden? You're a man. Yeah, I hear you howling at me. Grow a pair! Well, my response to you is you don't know half the truth of this matter. This is a more dainty situation than you could ever imagine. Egon, yes, that's his actual name, is ruthless in his browbeating. He's rough in his punishment. He owns everyone in this college. He can swear, punch, and kick anyone. Even the head teacher. And that's mainly because his dad gives this college 30% of its annual budget. Egon is king. Might as well be wearing a crown because he is. Oh, am I kidding? He's the fucking god of this college. You won't also be surprised to know that all the girls in this place like him. Yes, well, that really isn't a surprise, is it, Aiden? Considering he's a god. Thanks for that inner thought. They all fuck him. I won't go into that. And he also drives a Bugatti. Can this story get even worse? A fucking Bugatti! Who drives a Bugatti around here? I assume you, the audience, are saying, Well, lots of people. So, I'll choose to ignore you. One time a kid who was chasing a football pass ran into his car, and Egon walked up to the kid, and POW! The kid was punched in the face. The kid's parents obviously wanted the head teacher to punish Egon. The head teacher, for various reasons we already know wouldn't, so the kid's parents sued Egon. Three minutes later, they walked out of the principal's office with a check for 50 grand in their pockets. Funny enough, the lawsuit never happened. Bastard. Back to me. Yesterday, my head was flushed twice by Egon and his cronies. Actually, Egon just stood watching whilst his cronies did the not-so-laborious job of punishing me. Three days before that, he opened two yogurts in front of me, and walked over calmly, and poured it over my head. Everyone laughed, of course. Even her. Jess. More on who Jess is in a minute. Four days ago, he pushed me against a wall and stole my pocket money. Not that he actually needed it. Five days ago, after a long day in the college library, I came out to the car park to find my car wheels missing. And guess who did what or what happened to them? We know. What I'm essentially saying is, my life right now is shit. Why? Her. Jess. Egon, our not-so-lovely wacko, likes her. Yeah, well, she's an aspiring actress, with a pretty face. Possibly the most beautiful one in this godforsaken place. She's ocean blue-eyed, slender, blonde-headed bombshell. She's smart, although not more than me. I take that accolade. She's from a famous Hollywood family. Her great-grandfather worked alongside John Wayne in a western. No one in this place knows that. I don't even think Jess knows the full facts of this. But I do. I did my fucking research. She's good and... <clears throat> Damn. No, no, no. We're going to keep that information locked up. It should be no surprise to you, then, that she's the woman of my dreams. She's my angel. She's mine. Oof. I don't know why I'm saying that angered. It's just... I wish I could shout that out loud for the world to hear. Obviously, I can't. Egon and Jess have a... troubled relationship, let's say. But don't ask, I don't have a clue about it. Jess, so she claims, pretends to like him back, when in reality, she enjoys fucking me in the back of my car. Ho <laughs> ho, I know. You weren't expecting that, were you? We aim to shock on the Joao Nasita podcast. You're fucking Egon's chick? Dude, based on what you've said, you're a dead man. Well, thank you, audience. I freaking know, okay? Leave it. Like I was saying, 
She detests him, so she claims to my face, and she claims they don't fuck. They just touch. Is that really any better? I imagine not, but hey, what? Nothing. (sighs) You were going to brag, weren't you? No, I wasn't, in her thoughts. Shut up. You were. Don't lie. I wasn't born yesterday. I know there's something more going on between them. I can't confirm it, but deep down, when you know, you know. It's a fact. Jury has been presented with the evidence, and their verdict is completed and out for the offender to know he's fake. I know. Sorry this tone is a bit loathsome, but there's no other way to look at it. This, my relationship with Jess, isn't something I want. I've made it plainly clear to her in the past. I don't want her. She knows my feelings on this matter, but she won't listen. I don't want her, and I will never want her. It's plain and easy to transcribe. But... And there is one, unfortunately. We both get itches, which, if we don't scratch, it gets irritating. Fuck. I know what you're thinking. This will be your downfall. Oh, well, hey, I've watched enough episodes of The Sopranos to know it will. You don't have to recite that to me, brain. I'll get into how me and Jess got started on this journey in a later episode. But for now, let's concentrate on now. Here, what's happening in this present moment? Jess is staring at me again. This wasn't our deal. I told her many times. This can't happen. It's like... She likes to vex me on purpose, so I get hurt. Back to our deal, which was, we would not look or acknowledge one another. One look, and that's all it takes, and we could be in boiling water. Well, I say we, I'm mainly talking about me. She's a woman, and I don't imagine Egon being Chris Brown or Johnny Depp, despite however dreadfully he behaves towards me. Jess and her friends look at me. They mouth something to Jess. Fuck! Why are you still here, Aiden? Leave! I hope they're not talking about you, Aiden. Or else, you're fucked again, buddy. Please, God, if you give me anything today, get them to talk about... The serpent. The devil in my brain. The snake whose bite marks are still over my body. The bastard whose current status is Jess's boyfriend. Not me. Him. The man who people claim fucks like an adult movie star. A quick question, Aiden. Do you actually believe that? Why would she come back to you if that was the case? Stop it there. Fill up your car with petrol and drive away. I take quick bites of my hamburger and fries. I follow that up with a sip of my Coke. And she's still fucking looking at me. What's wrong with her? Why is she so keen to see me die? I send her a quick deathly stare as if to say... What was our deal? It was that we'd act cold and give nothing away. That was the deal. Oh no. I forgot her friends were watching me. They whisper something in Jess's ear. Shit! Fuck! Her friends are watching me! This could get dangerous if Egon enters now and sees... Ah, shit! He walks in with his pals. Up, Aiden. Don't wait. You're a dead man if you stay where you are. Just get up and fuck off home! Jess sees Egon. She waves at him as he walks over to her. Egon wears an old-school Nike Arsenal top. He's half German and half Japanese. He's nearly six foot. And he's, of course, got broad shoulders. And to make this even more fatal for me, he's trained in martial arts and kung fu. Oh, and I'm not done. He goes out hunting with actual guns with his father every weekend without fail. I am truly screwed, man. This isn't a war I'm winning. Sorry, fans of romance. I'll probably lose every battle in this story. There's no hope for me in this world. Sorry. Jess stands to give Egon a kiss on the mouth. They both smile. They look happy and in love. She'll pay for that later. Yeah, here's the thing. We're meeting up later. We've had it on our Google Calendar for three days. We've had... uh, 30 other meetings in the past. She never misses them. She's an addict. I 
have full control of her body. She likes it, so I'll punish her later. And she won't be able to walk the same way as she did before. And that's a promise. Oh, you, my darling, are getting... As I'm in my thought, I realize Egon and Jess are staring at me. Egon seems unconvinced as he sends two of his cronies over. Fuck. No, not again. God. They walk over. This ain't good. Run. Just fucking run. My legs. What's happening to my legs? Why won't they move? Move, you fucking bastards. They reached me. One guy pushes my head violently backwards. I hit a wall. It hurts. The other punches me in the stomach. The college tutors are watching. The head teacher is with them. None of the teachers make a move to stop me getting hurt. They pretend not to see it. Jerk offs. Jess stands to get them to stop. At least I hope that's what I'm hoping she's doing. There's an argument going on as another punch lands on my chest. If they carry on, I might not breathe. Fuck, this is painful. Jess is getting even more stressful. From what I can see, it's fine. I want to shout at her. Obviously, I can't. Egon whistles and the boys let go of me. They push me to the floor and head off. My favorite English teacher, who's seen the whole fight, walks over and steps over me to throw his food waste in the bin. She mouths, I'm sorry, and then casually walks off without helping me get up. Lovely. I pick up my tray from the floor and put it away. I head off. Three minutes later, as I walk down the hallway, a text appears from her. Jess. It reads, You can punish me for that later if you like. I text back, If you think I'm coming after that, you're wrong. She quickly writes back, I'm not losing this. Come or I tell him. By him, I assume she means Egon. You touched me up. Your choice. Meet me there. No, do you know what tonight? Fuck, no, what am I doing? I can't continue doing this. So kill me. I get another text. It says, this is what I'll be wearing. The text is closely followed up with a saucy picture of her in negligee. Oh, fuck. I'm in deep trouble tonight. Big, massive trouble. The Real Thing was read by me, Chakri, and written by Joao Nasita.